lot of pleasure in this moment because I've been listening to this man's music for quite some time. And uh, I've been inspired by really just about everything that he's done through the years, not just the occasional very funny songs that he's written, but uh, a lot of the other wonderful things, too. Uh, my proud uh, pleasure to bring on the show, Mr. Brian Wilson. Hi, Hi Brian. You? Good. Uh, how are you? Uh, you have a new book called Wouldn't It Be Nice, yes. an autobiography, which is really one of the most exciting and interesting and frank autobiographies that I've read. Uh, what were some of your feelings as, as this spilled out of you? Well, my, my childhood was kind of, kind of rough. Um, kind of had a hard time with my dad, you know, mm -hmm. pretty tough. But uh, I don't know, I guess you could say he whapped the heck, the heck out of me. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you sustained uh, enough abuse, I would say, for 20 people on yes, this book. Yes. Well, we'll get to that a little later, but uh, right now, uh, you, you brought a new song in, which is certainly one that I've had a lot of pleasure with, and it's one that's not available on the market. I think it ought to be, but in the meantime, we're going to play it for all the people who are listening and uh, hope that a lot of you enjoy it as much as I do. It's called uh, Smart Girls, and uh, this is from a project you're working on currently, yes, right? Yes, Was this song kind of a reaction to some other things that you heard Perhaps it's it's a rap song, which is yeah. It's a white it's a white rap song. And, uh huh. That's uh, all I can say for it. <laughs> Were you like listening to some rap songs on the radio, something like that? Oh yeah, I heard a lot of them on the radio. We we figured we could do our own brand of a rap. Uh huh. Well, uh, you certainly accomplished that. It's certainly like no other rap song that I think anybody's heard before. Yes. And let's give it a listen. Brian Wilson and Smart Girls. Oh, that was just fine. Brian Wilson and Smart Girls, a new and as yet unavailable recording. And Brian Wilson is my guest here under the Swagberry trees. You're, you're a great rapper, you know. Thank you. Do you listen to a lot of current music on the radio? Oh, yeah. All the time. What are some of the things that you have uh, enjoy that kind of stick out? Well, I like uh, Joan Jett. Oh, yeah? Aerosmith. I like Aerosmith. Oh, yeah. They're, they're certainly doing fine. And uh, the Rolling Stones. Uh, I was reading in your book about a Rolling Stones session that you attended. There's just so many great high times and parties that are described in this book and some of the downside yes. of that, too. And a, and a lot of real uh, intimate insights into not only your own music, but some other people's as well. I'd like to move on to something that, uh, according to your new book, Wouldn't It Be Nice, that uh, really kind of uh, captured your mind and your ear when you were a kid. And that's a group that... Maybe a lot of people don't hear too much of these days, but the Four Freshmen, really wonderful harmony singing group that took the world by storm in the early 1950s. And uh, you were uh, driving along listening to the radio in your mom and dad's car, right, when you yes. first heard their, their music? What kind of came upon you when, when you heard this? Well, when I heard the four-part, the four-part harmony, I thought they, that was the best sound I'd ever heard. I never heard a sound in my life that, I, that I'd like better. A I, very, very, very special sound. I guess you'd heard uh, church harmony and old barbershop harmony yes. and things like that, but this this was quite different. The four freshmen had a a certain similar vocal blend of it's a very rare group of four people that could whose voices could could all stand out. Although you hear the one big sound, but you can also hear the individual uh, sounds. Mm -hmm. I read in a book about the the four freshmen uh, that they conceived a lot of their songs as being five or six part harmony, but since there were only four of them, they just had to pick the right notes. Right. And maybe you do that sometimes too. Yeah, we learned how to do that from the freshmen. Okay, here are the four freshmen and a recording from the early 50s called Day by Day. Dr. Demento Show, uh, admittedly not the sort of song that I usually play on this mad music and crazy comedy program, but this is a very special day because Brian Wilson is with me, and uh, the Beach Boys certainly much influenced by the, the great harmonies of the four freshmen. Uh, you came from a musical family. Your father, Murray Wilson, was a songwriter who never had a lot of success but had a few kind of uh, almost hits here and there. Yeah. Well, I'm a self-taught musician. I mean, he... he uh he had a, had a talent for songwriting, mm -hmm. but he never really taught me how to play the piano, and I had to learn by myself. But it's better that way, because I had learned more, because a self-taught musician is better than a trained musician, I think. Oh, yeah. Be because you're there from the very start to see that song develop, or to see that piano start to happen in front of your eyes. If you're there to see it when you first start out, much better that way than to have someone say, here, play it like this, and then you play it like that, 
you know? So it's pretty cool. I suffered through a dozen years of piano lessons myself and never learned to play. So <laughs> I think you got a point there, Brian. So you would hear, like, songs on the radio and then try and approximate them on the piano? Is that, did you kind of get started that way? Yeah. I, I uh, learned to analyze all the four parts of The Four Freshmen. Mm -hmm. All throughout the whole song, I, I, I charted it. And I learned how to play a lot of their songs on the piano. And, and nobody at my age, like a 16 or 17-year-old, could ever do that. So I, I was in a, in a very high bracket of musical ability at, at 16 or 17 years old. Certainly far in advance, I must say, of, of, of what your dad did, but yes. certainly uh, what he did uh, makes an interesting footnote to the story because you do talk a lot about it in the, the book, Wouldn't It Be Nice? Well, it's just, it's just that when a guy goes, you know, get in the bathroom, you know, and that's when I start crying, right, because I know I'm going to get my ass beat, you know. Get your pants down to your ankles. Pin over the bathtub. <laughs> He's just talking, he used to yell like that and beat the hell out of me, you know, and if he ever came back to life, which I don't think he will. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't really hold it against him, though. You know what I mean? Well, it's good for you to say, but uh, this book really has a lot of harrowing accounts of just the uh, abuse far beyond what... Uh, yes. I mean, there is certainly a lot more child abuse in this country than most people know about, but a uh, few cases certainly is <laughs> as dramatic as what happened to you. Yes. But uh, getting back to... I suppose, the happier side of your dad's existence. This song was, I guess, the biggest hit he ever had. Yes. It's, it's by a group called The Bachelors, which never enjoyed too much fame, but uh, they got a little play with Murray Wilson's Two Step Sidestep. Written by Murray Wilson, father of Brian, Dennis, and Carl of the Beach Boys, and Brian Wilson is here with me. Uh, Brian wrote a song uh, relatively early in the Beach Boys' career all about a father. I don't know if it's your father, but... What song is this? Uh, I'm bugged at my old man. Oh, right. that's silly. <laughs> that's a silly idea. This is Brian Wilson, and you're listening to L.A.'s only classic rock, 97.1 KLSX. <laughs> Dr. Demento here, and my guest is Brian Wilson. You wrote a song which I play every Father's Day on this program, and it's called I'm Bugged at My Old Man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wondering, is this really about your dad? Yeah, come to think of it, it was. But, you know, kind of subconsciously, I didn't think. I mean, I can't remember exactly what the motive was for writing the song, but it, but it might as well have been about my dad. Because he, like, he was so crazy, you know. I mean, the absurdity of the lyrics of this thing are so absurdly funny that, I mean, it... it, it He's got to be here. We've got to hear this. Okay. From the album Summer Days and Summer Nights, uh, recently reissued on Compact Disc, along with uh, another great album, The Beach Boys Today, here are the Beach Boys uh, featuring uh, Brian. Although uh, on the original record, it said, lead too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the cover, it, it listed all the lead singers of all the songs, but when it came to this one, it said, too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess the secret's out. It's yes. you, Brian. <laughs> I'm bugged at my old man. The Beach Boys from the album Summer Days and Summer Nights. Many of the Beach Boys albums did have their uh, their bits of humor on them, though there was, of course, a lot of beauty and just a lot of straight-ahead rock and roll on them as well. A uh, year or two after Summer Days and Summer Nights, uh, of course, came the album Pet Sounds, which many people would still consider your masterpiece, and I wouldn't uh, argue with that a bit. Right after that, came an album that a whole lot has been written about. It started out being an album called Smile, which was going to be a, a very grand project, a massive project using lots of orchestras and things. And this was, of course, to put it in perspective at the time that the Beatles were doing Revolver and then Sgt. Pepper. Mm -hmm. That album never came out. Uh, it was replaced by a more modest album called Smiley Smile. But that still is one of my favorite albums because it's got three or four real funny songs on it. Uh, yeah. Uh, including one that you wrote with a guy called Van Dyke Parks. Right. Uh, called Vegetables. Vegetables, and right. Van Dyke has been one of my favorite musicians, too. I love his albums. So tell me what you recall about working with him. Well, Van Dyke was uh, very fast, you know. He worked quick, you know, and, he, and he'd, he'd smoke a joint, and then he'd sit there, and all of a sudden, bam, all these lyrics would come out of him, you know. Just unbelievable stuff. Greatest talent, one of the greatest unmade talents I've ever heard in my life. He's very, very... Actually, he's very ahead of things, you know? He's very avant-garde, mm -hmm. you know? 
Collectibles by the Beach Boys from the album Smiley Smile. And Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys is my guest here under the Smogberry Trees today. And uh, once again, I want to mention wonderful, fascinating book, Wouldn't It Be Nice, My Own Story, a book full of the triumphs and tragedies of the Beach Boys and really a, a fascinating book. Uh, Actually, it was a therapeutic thing mm -hmm. because... At first, I felt very pain about, painful about it, and then I, then I realized, hey, I'm getting this off my chest. I'm getting this all off my chest. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great story, and I'd certainly recommend the book highly to anybody. It, it even has a page or two at the end about the song we heard at the beginning of this little segment of the program called Smart Girls. Very entertaining piece, which I'll certainly be playing again on the show in the weeks to come. Brian, it's certainly been an enormous pleasure, an unexpected pleasure, having you as a guest here on the Dr. Thank Demento you. Show. Uh, let's wind up with one more Beach Boys song and your choice. Do it again. Do it again. Dr. Demento Show. Brian Wilson, my guest. And Brian, let's do it again sometime right. soon. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank, right. Best of luck to you, too. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.